So, shh. All right, so where are we going to start? Um, linked in the document or on Edmodo for you guys, there should be this guy. Is this the right one? And you guys don't have edit privileges, right? You guys can only view. When you open it up, the first thing would be to make a copy of it. Ooh, it's loading slowly today. Reload. All right. So since I already have one open, I'll show you guys here instead. At the top left, if you don't know, file, make a copy. That's going to give you your own copy that you can edit because you can't edit the original. And you should have data that looks a lot like this. I've already sorted it first by class, if they're all in order. Then I sorted by the time interval, that so all the time intervals are organized. That's the easiest way to do that. Yes, sure. Um, did you share the doc with us and like share it with me for yeah. Google Drive? It is linked yeah. inside. It's in the student folders. It's also linked inside the lab. Like the student the folder on Haiku Learning? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh. So on Google Drive, the Haiku Learning folder. Okay. All right, so. We have the data where every group from the three classes did one centimeter and two centimeter and we all did them at different time intervals. That gives us for each data point really three things. Three calculator, not three, three observations, right? Three measurements. Why is that useful? Yes. Okay, good. So is it more accurate for us to have three measurements and then get the average? Averages are true. Averages? Okay, good. When you look at the very first one, for the five minute interval for with the one centimeter, what do you guys notice? Ahmed? Five, six, and ten. Okay, good. Now, I'm going to talk about you guys one group later about this, because how big is it to start? And 10 millimeters. So are they saying that there is no color change at all? At the moment, yes. It, right now, I would classify this guy as an outlier. It does not make sense. Very good. So what should we do with that outlier? You can drop it. Can you drop it and not make no mention of the fact that you dropped data in your lab report? No. So it's clearly stated. Right? In your lab report, in either probably, where's the best place? Analysis. In your analysis section, you should say, I drop this one, this one, and this one, because in my opinion, they are outliers. Because they skew the data, they don't make sense. Now, if my A 1 kids want to fix their data, we'll do that later. Before you guys make copies, and I'll let you know. Now, back in here, what's next here? Calculations. Hopefully you guys have more skill with Excel since you all, only one of you put your hands up. But there is a way to do calculations in Excel. First off, I'm gonna show you, it recognizes patterns. So if you do five, 10, grab the little box, drag it down. It continues that pattern. You can also do addition. So if I want this to equal Go back here and get the data. This one, and I can do the plus sign, and this one. And then I hit enter, it is now adding those numbers together. Okay, good. None of you are surprised. My kids last year were very surprised, and I was very surprised that they were surprised. You can also then divide by two to get your average, and that does not make sense. Use brackets. You can definitely do a calculator. If you want to do all of this by hand, go right ahead. You will find that this will be a lot easier though, using the things inside spreadsheets. So that is one way is adding them and then dividing by the number. You'll notice the first thing I did was I put an equal sign because that's how it's going to do an actual calculation. Excel also and spreadsheets, and you can use either one for this. Somebody asked me that earlier. If you want to use Download it to Excel and use it there. That's fine. You can also do what they call uh, functions inside it. 
there's one that's actually called average. So if you type equals average, you can select that one. You go and highlight the cells you want, which for me is these three. I hit enter, and that is the average of those three values. You guys with me so far? Okay. Have you guys all done functions before? Yeah. Somewhat? Okay. So this is better than last year. They were very amazed that you could even do addition. Okay, so I now have, I should fix this. This is the one centimeter, right? And this is the two centimeter would be the next one. So since I've already done those calculations on the one centimeter side, it is smart enough that I can highlight it and whoop, grab the little blue box and drag it across. And now it's giving me the averages for the two centimeter one as well. Okay, so because I moved over here, I'll, I'll show you here. Notice how this says F3, right? So it's pulling data from the F column. And then this one, because I moved over one letter, is now pulling from the G column. It is smart enough that if you drag that little blue box over one or down one, it'll pull its source data over one or down one. Now, can I do that for going down? No. Ahmed, why are you saying no? Maybe. If you have any clearer terminology to understand what you're saying. Can anyone else try to explain? Why can I not just drag it down? Yeah. Well, if you drag it down, let's say, one, uh, if you drag it down one for the uh, 10 15 minutes, it'll only take this number instead of all these numbers. Okay, close. I think you're right. You're not explaining thoroughly. So I'll show you. My 10 one is averaging these three cells. You guys agree? If I drag it down one, it is now going to average these three cells. It only goes down one. And messed up again. You guys see the error there? Right? So, unfortunately, for the very first time, those eight up to the 40 minutes will have to manually select and do the averaging of the three sets of cells. I haven't found a way to fix this. If I did, I would make it work. There might be a way inside spreadsheets or Excel, but I'm a average user, I'd say. Okay, so I can't figure out how to make that work, make it automated. So just be aware that you will, therefore, in that first one, need to go through and enter them manually the first way I showed you. So I'll show it once more. You would click in the cell, do equals average, and then you can select the function. And it pops up and explains what you're doing, right? So I want the value one to value two, dot, dot, dot. And that's just highlighting the cells. So I want here to here, and I hit enter, and now it's going to do that next set. Do you guys notice something funny? It's gone up. Okay. So why has it gone up? Even though those gelatins sat in there longer, five minutes longer. Danica? It would be more diluted. It would be more vinegar inside of the yeah. It would be less like color inside of the skeleton cube. It would be longer. And, well, that's all we're getting. And also, it might be higher because it's more so, yeah. I lied. I lied. I said because not the second set, but the first set. This seems to be a pretty big outlier. Right, so she's saying this is the four is not liar? Uh, yeah. Okay. And that's what my class yesterday said too. But isn't the four the only thing bringing these values down? Oh. Right? So we're comparing these ones to these ones. Maybe the eight is. But the eight's also not that big of a difference. So anyone else want to guess? <coughs> Yeah. 
Yeah. You guys are great. This is your first time doing a somewhat complicated laugh. One eight hundred numbers. Yes. So, note it in your lap, comment that it seems to be abnormal that it goes down and then back up to this one bump. But I wouldn't say that we have enough evidence to call that necessarily an outlier. Right? It's only two above the six. It's just a strange bump up for some reason. Yeah. Then again, a different group though. And this is why I, I said earlier I need to talk to my eight ones, I think. Eight ones, I want us to verify the data we put in because most of the somewhat outliers are us for some reason. Right? For some reason. You guys need a better teacher, I guess. Okay, so we'll check that. Um, it could even be the fact that we ended up using slightly different vinegar. No, we had the same bottle. I'm looking for excuses. Okay, so. Yes, it could just be that. All right, so moving forward, we now have. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna just guess some data. This should really just be a sort of downward trend. But that's my data. Sound good? And logically, let's do this is gonna equal ten plus. There. No, that's not what I wanted. Come on, little engine. There we go. I don't know how to use trackpads. Okay, so I have data now. Don't copy my data. What use is this information right now? What is it telling us? Linear shapes. They were cubes. They were three dimensional. Right? So those dimensions are all linear, which is good. It's, it's easier to measure that. But in reality, what is that cube? What is a better tool for us to measure for to compare the one centimeter versus the two centimeter? How can we actually compare those when right now we know one is bigger than the other? And we're, we're using linear measurements, and that doesn't really make sense. Yep. Yeah. Volume. volume. Right? So we want the volume. Does it make sense that the volume is probably a better indicator of what the cell actually is? Yeah. Okay, good. And surface area will come in later. So we'll, we'll talk about surface area too. Can you take a guess as to why surface area is important? Because the surface area gets squared, right? And the body is here. Mm -hmm. So the volume gets faster. Good. Good. And we'll come back to that. Are you thinking of doing the surface area as well, guys? 
You could. I don't know if that'd be useful. It kind of is. Yeah. Right, and that's why it's important. Okay. We'll get that. All right. So, what is the purpose of this lab to show? What are we trying to actually show in terms of the biological functions that you read about in two point oh? Yeah. Okay. You guys are always focused on osmosis. It's more about diffusion, right? You hear anything else? Okay. Diffusion is more important. So I told my other kids yesterday. Think of it as a simple thing, right? It can really be any nutrient or mineral or resource that a cell needs. Does it have to diffuse across the membrane? Yeah. They, everything has to diffuse throughout the whole cell, right? If it needs oxygen or carbon dioxide, how does it get it? Diffusion. So we think about water a lot because it's a good example one, and we similar to what we did yesterday. But in terms of actually understanding what a cell needs, I feel like oxygen might make more sense. The cells need oxygen. Okay. So if we think about the diffusion of oxygen, is it okay if only half the cell gets oxygen? No. No. Right? So we want to be able to get as much of the cell as you through as possible. So right now, if you look at this, is this cell 90% diffuse through, and this one's only 45%. Is that accurate? I <laughs> numbers? Oh, you're right. Yeah, I think I think I you guys are now confused me. For me, it is not the total linear measurement of the one centimeter, ten. Is there not 10 millimeters across? And is it not, have we not diffused 9 millimeters across? If there's one left? Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So that's why I said 90%. So is that actually 90%? Are we sure? I feel like this is a trick question. It is. I try to use the is the cell linear? No. Yeah. So for that first one, this is 10 by 10 by 10. And how much is left? One by one by one. Okay. So how would I figure out the volumes of these two guys? Yes. Sure. So, what is the original 
volume of my zoom when it's 10 by 10 by 10 millimeters. One thousand cubic millimeters. Okay. What is the volume remaining of my last diagram at the very end? One cubic millimeter. How did you get that? Call that B for you. So one times one times one. We get one cubic millimeter. So if we do this, let's do this as a spreadsheet now. Here's where Again, the spreadsheet tools come in handy. I'm going to do right here, let's we'll call it V1 for the one centimeter and V2. You guys should put better names than that later on. Can I not just say then that this is going to be equal to the measurements that we did to the power of three? So if you do shift six, you get that little hut thing. That is an exponent, right? So that means 5.5 times 5.5 times 5.5, three times, and that's what we're doing. And then we can divide by 1,000 because that is our volume for the one centimeter guy. Is that now useful? Oh, I've already divided. Why did I divide right away? I already gave away the next hint. Okay, so rather than just doing the... I ended up not doing what I wanted. If I do just the volume by itself, is that useful? Actually, I'll show you guys why first. Let's fix that. I won't divide by a thousand. Let's just get the volume For V1 and V2. Does this let us compare those two guys equally? Looking at that right now, can you say whether a small cube or a big cube is better? Okay. Why is a small cube better? Yep. Okay. Do you think that's a fair comparison though? Because we already know that the Big one is a lot bigger. Okay. When I look at this right now, we're almost comparing apples and oranges, right? There's a two centimeter cube, there's a one centimeter cube. How can we make it on similar grounds and compare it with really similar units? Convert it. Convert it into the same to like. The, the volume of the first or the smaller cube to the bigger cube. Okay. I like this dimensions. Yeah, I think we might be on the right track. There's a really simple term that you guys did math in like the second unit, I think. Almond? Um, Almond. The only way to really do that is to use the exact same size cube. Which would make it difficult. Actually, I guess you could do it, but not with the one centimeter one. We have to go in a different direction. But yes, there are ways to do it. And that might give you a different name in a way. But you can comment on that in your discussion. Don't let me do it. Okay. Maya? Well, Eight. Okay. You are on the right track. There's a very simple math term that you guys use, Jazz. Yes, a, a part of that. Jackson? <laughs> we could do a unit rate. There's something even more simpler than you guys always use. <laughs> This is more difficult than I expected. So, great. It's if I convert both to a 
percentage of diffusion. Would that not be a perfect comparison? Oh. <laughs> Percentages. <laughs> oh. All right, so. Shh. Great it. We already know from over there that I would divide this one by a thousand. What would I do the V2 by? What am I dividing? Yeah. 8,000. Why is it 8,000? Yeah, so it's going to be two times because we, the cubing piece. Good. Now, right now, I get a decimal number. But for both of these, I can actually change the format of the cell. At the top, you'll see where it says format there. It's above the border of the thing. Format, it drops down. I At the top, right where the border is, it actually says number. You can't see that well. And I can go across to percent. It's going to automatically turn those into percents. Then I can grab the little box, the magic box. And V1, I'm going to change this title to V1 percent. V2 percent. So now, do you feel like we have a far better way of comparing this data? Now that they're in percents. Before it might have been confusing why was V2 so much larger, now it's as a percentage. We can see that the V1 gelatin is far more efficient at getting the nutrients in. Yes? That is what, yeah, that's what's left. Okay. If you want to do it the other, the other way. It's your guys' choice. Whichever way works best, because it's not that difficult to get it right. You do 100. No, you do 1 minus. If you just do 1 minus E2, you will get how much did diffuse through. All right, and you can do that calculation. So whichever one you feel that shows it best, you guys can pick. Right? Because it's your lab, it's your choice to analyze. I just need to show you the tools and show you the advantages and the pitfalls to a degree so that you can work your way through it. Now, let's see what else I have. Uh, I had one of the spot here. Why? Is, it's not quite a perfect representation. In a real cell, what is happening as the stuff diffuses across? As the oxygen diffuses in, what is actually happening in a living cell? Yes? Um, waste. In, in a way, what happens to make that waste? What happens to the oxygen as it diffuses in? Does a cell just sit there waiting for it to get 100% saturation of oxygen? It's using it, doesn't it? As that oxygen is diffusing in, the cell is actually using that oxygen and diffusing out carbon dioxide. Right? Whereas in our gelatin, the gelatin does not have any way of actually using up that vinegar coming in. Right? So it's not a perfect example. So even though we are working towards a 100% in our minds, is the cell actually doing that? No. So what does this actually represent more so? What happens to cell It's a rate, right? This is giving us a rate of how quick that diffusion is happening. And now is that important to the cell? Yes. Okay. Uh, next thing we'll do quick is graphing this. I think you guys probably all know how to graph, but I will show you quick. All you do is highlight what you want. Um, I'll point it up so you guys can actually see. Okay, at the top, there is a little chart symbol right there. Do you guys see it? Next to the blue picture. You would click that, and it will slowly take its time to pop up. Oh, it was way quicker today. 
So in this case for me, it defaulted to a bar chart, bar graph. Who thinks that that's probably the best tool to show it? Perfect. You guys all passed the last unit of the year for math. Yes. Actually, no, that's wrong. Grade seven math. So I'm going to angle this one back over. You'll notice on the right side, it gives me a lot of the information or the tools to modify this chart. What would be a better graph to use for two different linear measurements over time? Ahmed, line graph. Okay, and that's what I get. <clears throat> So here's that one bump we pointed out. This is also my false data that I put in. I mean, that was wrong, that's okay. Why is this not a straight line? Kira. Can you explain that? Okay. If we go back over to my data, let's move this to the side for a second. I went down by one each time for that whole last section. Which even that is actually inaccurate. It won't do that inside your data, I don't think. It shouldn't do that. Adeline? Good. Maybe grab a little guy again. Right? Because we're shooting it, it ends up being an exponential decrease. Wouldn't you guys agree that the volume in the outside millimeter is going to be a lot bigger than the volume in the inside millimeters? Right? Right? As you go bigger and bigger, it's not just adding one more, it's actually adding a loss. And that's why. The other reason would be, I'll explain why. When you guys do it, this data itself, your linear measurements should not be linear. Because when you have that distribution across, I'll draw it in different layers. Outside, we have 100% vinegar. Actually, five. Okay? And it's going to diffuse across. After five minutes, maybe it's done a full millimeter. What is the percentage in here? A vinegar after five minutes, say. Just as a guess. 10%. Right? It might change color at 10%. And now the vinegar from this layer is diffusing into this layer. Is it going to be as fast as here to here? No. No, because this is at a slower, still a lower concentration. Well, sorry, I'll rephrase that. This is still a high concentration compared to him, but not as big a differential. So it's going to more slowly diffuse across. And meanwhile, this vinegar is still diffusing into him. Right? So that's why as the cells get bigger, and as it starts getting closer to the inside, diffusion rates will slow down because it's trying to get through all those layers. Yeah? Well, this is more because of the cubing. Because I did use linear measurements here. Right? So this result right here is because when you cube this, right, now it looks different. Right? And you can see that here with the square, this one millimeter is a lot bigger than this one millimeter than this one millimeter. And in the cube, it's one more multiplication of that. So we need to have No, it should not. It should look more like this. Okay. And there's two reasons. One is because of the cubing of it. And the other is because <laughs> this won't be linear either. Right? This will be nonlinear because of this function. Okay. okay. Is that good? I think there's only one thing left to mention, then we are good to go. Yeah. And it's your thing from earlier. Okay, so during area to volume ratio. It is really important. She's already hit about it. My guys, we started with service area and volume. In math, because I want you guys to understand it to the
or the and face it back. Let's do the one centimeter and the two centimeter guy. What would be the volume of the one centimeter cube? One. one. How about for the two centimeter cube? Eight. Eight. What is the surface area of the sky? Six. And for this guy? Twelve. Twelve. What? We know. Alright, so we have for this guy, same side, one side is two by two, so that's four. There's six of them, so it is four. When we look at this, remember it is according to that so our peers at home that are sick and trying to keep up with us. What does volume represent in terms of the actual cell? It is a really simple answer. Huh? What is the volume? Yeah. Yeah, it's just the whole cell. It's the mass of the cell, how big the cell is. And it kind of represents all of the nutritional needs of that cell, doesn't it? If you double the size of the cell, would its nutritional need probably double? Right? And that's why that diffusion piece is important. Good. Surface area. What does that represent to the cell? Yeah. How it gets the space created. Specifically. Well, which which I say what word in element cell? Membrane, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I, I think about something else. And I'm like... Right. This is where the diffusion happens. It's only on the outside of the cell when you have it happening. That's why the surface area. Is a good person that. And then volume is the whole nutritional needs. Right? So as cells get bigger, the volume gets bigger a lot bigger in the surface area. It makes it difficult to get them get across in a huge shape. So we often do what's called surface area to volume ratio. This one is six to one. Okay? And that's really Pretty good. What about this guy? Three to one. Right, so for the nutritional needs of the cell, there's a half as much surface area to break some across. When you double the size of the cell. Yeah. The total amount. Right, so that's why we did one side is four times six is this. Uh, one size is one times six. Okay. Where did you get the numbers for the surface area? How did you? What was the calculation behind that? So we uh, two times two is one size of a two by two by two square, right? And then there's six sides, so four times six. Six sides. What is your? Oh, okay. 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 Any questions on this right now? Alright, so I'm going to send my guys back. You guys can nice stay here. I would recommend you all work on Excel because I'm here today and this block can help you out and Mr. V can help out as well. Hey, Demo. You want to finish it? Please stay. Why are they saying that? Can you be on the priest or like. I thought it helps those kids, but if you have questions, it's worth it. You have to like a Yeah. So it's more the Excel. And that's fine. I should stop the video.